Hi, uh, we're continuing on today with our, uh, our lesson on Moses' Tabernacle. And today we're going to focus on the furniture on, inside the tabernacle. Um, and uh, I pray that it's as much a blessing to you as it's been to me. Um, when we first think, uh, the first piece of furniture that we come across when we um, go into the tabernacle is the brazen altar. This is an altar made out of brass. And brass in the Bible always speaks about judgment. As a matter of fact, we told you before that uh, there were certain metals that were used in, in every part of the tabernacle. And you'll find brass and silver and gold were primarily the, the, the metals that were used. Brass speaks of judgment and, and bra the brass and altar was where the sinner came and had his sins dealt with by the sacrifices that he laid on the altar. Uh, it was a pretty nasty, ugly, dirty thing, um, uh, uh, kind of environment, but that's that's how it is. Sin is a dirty, nasty, ugly thing, and um, it's a deadly thing. At the altar, the, uh, the, the penitent or the sinner would take his, his offering, his, his, his lamb, goat, his sheep, without blemish, um, to the priest, uh, he would lay his hand on the head of the animal. The priest would cut his throat. And as the life force of that animal was, that innocent animal was being poured out on the altar, then the sins of the individual were transferred from them upon that animal. It reminds us of what the cross of Jesus Christ is. Uh, that that, that uh, on Calvary, you know. Jesus, who knew no sin, yet became sin, that we might become the righteous of God. Jesus, he took on our sins. He suffered, bled, and died for us. And that brass altar pictures that. Uh, the, the next piece of furniture we come to is also made out of brass. It, both of these pieces of furniture, the, uh, the, the, the brazen altar and the one called the labor or fountain that had a base to it, both of them were made out of brass and both of them are in the outer court. Um, again, this is a piece of furniture that speaks of judgment. Uh, it is a, uh, the labors where the priests were able to wash or cleanse themselves, but it was also was constructed in such a way that the brass was like a mirror. And, you know, the priest uh, could see himself in the mirror. And he had to be, he himself had to also be clean. So this was a place where he could look and make sure that he was in the right condition. It's a word to us that reminds us that the believer also ought to examine themselves to see if they're in the faith. That we should do a checkup from the neck up. That we should um, really be diligent about ensuring that we're, you know, as clean as we ought to be. Now, how do you get clean? Well, in Psalms 119.9, the Bible says, how does the young man cleanse his way? He says, by taking heed thereto, according to thy word. Yeah. So if I just pay attention to what God says, and I do what he says, I'm going to be clean. The Bible talks about the washing of water by the word. And I, I believe that, that again, that we're looking at this washing of water by the word, again, a type of Jesus, a type of that sanctification by the Holy Spirit, where we're, we're, we're washed, we're cleansed, and we're sanctified, separated to God for his purpose. Uh, then we go through this 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 doorway, and and then the, the, and then we're met by three other pieces of furniture, one on the right side, one on the left side, and and one uh, dead center, and 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 on on one side there's the golden candlestick. Now we've changed the material from brass to gold, and and you'll find that in the tabernacle, many of the things were gold. Gold always speaks of deity. It always speaks of divinity. It always speaks of God. As a matter of fact, you'll find that much of the furniture in the um, in the in the tabernacle was sometimes uh, used using acacia wood, and this is a wood found in the Holy Land that bends but doesn't break. It, wood speaks of humanity, and when you take the God said, "I want you to take acacia wood, but then overlay the wood in gold," and it's a picture of us, right? Because you know, we, 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 we had this treasure on earth and vessels. We break, but it don't. Um, you know, we're man. We bend, but we don't break, but we're covered by God. We're covered by Jesus Christ. And so 
the breast, the, the golden candlesticks speak to us again about Jesus. Isn't it wonderful how God has just said that Jesus is the center of it all? Jesus says, I am the way, I'm the truth, I'm the light. The man comes to the Father of my mind. Jesus is the light of the world. And inside the holy place, there's no window. There's no room for outside light. There's no need for outside light. There's no, uh, no need for outside philosophies or other people's opinions. Christ provides the light for every believer. And we get holy through listening to his word. Over across from the golden candlesticks was the table of showbread. Now the table of showbread spoke about, Jesus said what? He said, I am the bread of life. Amen? Uh, and, and, and what does the bread speak about? Jesus said, man, you don't live by bread only, but you live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And so this bread reminds us of, you know, give us this day our daily bread. It reminds us of the manna that God provides his people daily. We need the sustenance, the nourishment that you need as a believer comes through the word of God through Jesus Christ. And, and we move our attention back to the center right before the, uh, uh, the curtain that stands between the Holy and the, of Holies and the Holy Place. There's another piece of furniture called the Altar of Incense. And the Altar of Incense uh, represents the prayers of the saints. Uh, I've never seen a believer yet that didn't focus on Jesus' light or receiving God's word without understanding how essential and necessary prayer is for the believer. You know, somebody once said, no prayer, no power, little prayer, little power, much prayer, much power. Do you know in Revelations, the Bible says that our prayers are carried like fragrance, like fragrant incense before God Almighty, that they're carried by angels. Our prayers speak about our faith in God. Our prayers say, I believe and, and I trust uh, God who is spirit. I might not see him, but I know he'll hear me. And finally, we go right behind that, uh, right behind the, the curtain. And the last piece of furniture, we've talked about it before, is the Ark of the Covenant. Now, I'm not going to do a whole lot with that today because we're going to have a whole opera, we're going to have a session just on the Ark. Um, but, but, so I'll leave you with that so that maybe you can study it on your own before we get there. But I just want to encourage you, um, man, look at the love of God um, and, and how much that even back then, he's always spoke to us about Jesus Christ. God bless you. We love you. Take care.